Predict the relative polarity of bonds. Uh, this is from the IB data booklet. I mean you no harm, IB. Please don't sue me for cutting this little page out. See, the electronegativities are the small numbers at the bottom. There's been several definitions of electronegativity in the last few years. Uh, no one seems to agree, but this is from one of the textbooks. So it's the measure of the attraction of an atom for electron pairs in its covalent bond. Uh, electron pairs seems to come up a lot, but that's probably. There's, there's been other definitions that they've accepted too. Fluorine is the most electronegative, with an electronegativity of four. And as you go towards fluorine, uh, on the periodic table like those arrows show, electronegativity increases. Francium is the furthest away from fluorine, and it has the lowest electronegativity. That, that hates electrons the most, if you will. Well then, let's take chlorine. Chlorine's in group seven, so let me draw a couple of those, seven valence electrons. And when they come together, uh, you can see that the chlorine on the left thinks that it now has eight electrons and it's stable. The chlorine on the right also thinks it has eight electrons. They're sharing the central two, covalent bonding, co together, valent, valence. Now they both have an electronegativity of 3.2. So the electrons in the middle are shared spot in the center, right in the middle. They aren't being pulled one way or the other. And a difference in electronegativity of zero to 0.3 is considered non-polar. So those electrons and the bond are right in the middle, so chlorine is a non-polar molecule. Let's take hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen's group one, chlorine's group seven, still. But this situation's a little different. A chlorine has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. Chlorine loves electrons more than hydrogen does. So the electron pair that makes up the covalent bond is going to move towards the chlorine, making what's called a dipole. So one end of the molecule is going to be a little bit negative, the other is going to be a little bit positive, and so that's a polar bond between hydrogen and chlorine. Now looking at uh, the chlorine and bromine bonded together, their electronegativities are very similar. The difference is 0.3. They both really love electrons. And that difference is considered so small that the bond is, is non-polar. In actual fact, it's very slightly polar, but we assume non-polarity for less than 0.3 difference. Ammonia, NH3, well, there are three bonds there. Nitrogen has an electronegativity of three, which is greater than hydrogen. So the electrons in the bonds are gonna to move towards the nitrogen. I'm not sure about the lone pair, but I think that probably does too. So the little delta means a little bit. So delta plus is a little bit plus. And that arrow, you can see the arrow also has a plus to show uh, where the positive end of that dipole is in that bond. So the nitrogen-hydrogen bond is also polar. Let's take a weird example. So the bond between tin and fluorine. Now the difference in electronegativity is big. It's greater than 1.7, which is the cutoff for ionic. So the electron in tin, one of the valence electrons in tin, is actually going to be pulled off and go to the fluorine to make a fluoride ion, leaving a, a tin ion behind. So that's, that's beyond the purview of this. That's ionic bonding. And this was supposed to be all about covalent.